Hello friends, welcome to Pioneer of Success. We are conducting a short training course on unsteady heat transfer equation. In this particular video, we are going to talk about an implicit method commonly known as Crank-Nicholson method and this is a part of numerical solution for 1D unsteady heat conduction equation. We have been talking about this numerical solution since last two videos and we talked about FTCS and BTCS that is forward time central space and backward time central space method. This is another method which is given by Crank and Nicholson and in this particular method they have utilized a different scheme and I'll be exploring this in this particular video. So let me talk about the problem statement which we have already discussed in our previous video but the people who have not watched the previous videos for them let me just talk about the problem statement briefly. So we have a rectangular we have a very one dimensional rod wherein the temperature distribution we have to calculate and there is a heat flow going on because of the initial and boundary conditions. So the boundary is spanned between 0 to 1 and the condition or the initial condition of temperature is given by this particular equation and the left hand side of that particular rod is kept at zero temperature and also the right hand side. So those are two boundary conditions and this one is the initial condition and what we are doing we are solving temperature on this particular blue colored line. And in this particular CN method what we have done we have made a grid of 10 by 10 actually there are 10 divisions and if you need to have 10 divisions then you need to have 11 points. We have been talking about it since last few videos. So you can just count it. So it starts from 0 and it goes from say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So 0 to 10 you have basically 10 numbers and if you if you if you if you if you if you, if you just count the divisions you can say this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So again I am telling if you want to have 10 divisions you need to have 11 grid points and thereby this particular grid points have been taken and we will be solving temperature at the interior grid points given by this shaded zone. So what is happening basically we already know the temperature of the left hand side and right hand side and this is basically coming from the boundary conditions and we know the temperature at the bottom and this is coming from the initial conditions and we don't know the temperature at the interior grid points and that is why we are calculating for the interior grid points and in the vertical direction each line corresponds to a particular time step. Suppose we want to solve this heat equation for 0 to 1 second and we have divided this 0 to 1 time step into 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 second respectively. So if the first line represents 0 0.1 second, the second horizontal line may represent 0 0.2 second, the third one may represent 0 0.3 and as and this is the way the temperature will be marching in the vertical direction and this is all about the problem statement. Now let me just show the initial condition. So what we have done in an excel file we have actually plotted the initial temperature distribution which is given by an equation 4x minus x square. So if we plot it we have got a temperature distribution like this and we will be basically having this initial temperature distribution and then we will solve for the heat transfer equation and those initial temperature at different grid points will be varying based on the nature and boundary condition of the problem. So we have tried to show the initial and boundary conditions as well as the interior grid points we have to solve for by three different colors. So while we will be writing the code in Python, we will be developing this particular image 
which I have pasted here. So you can see the left hand and the right hand vertical line represents the boundary condition whereas the, the horizontal blue points represent the initial conditions and the red points are those points wherein we need to calculate the temperature from the discretized differential equation and we'll be discretizing this differential equation by a method which is given by crank nicholson and that's why it is called crank nicholson method now i come to the point why exactly and how exactly it is discretized by crank nicholson method so in order to understand that i have taken the time level so the the green line represents a solution at a temp at a time say t and the red line represents as, uh, the points at an elevated time t plus delta t now if we use the index then if t represents j index then t plus delta t will represent j plus 1 index now this is the way we uh, crank nicholson has discretized for the time derivative first order time derivative so this is forward time derivative this is very simple but for the space derivative if you if you if you look at it they have basically taken average of two different central differences and the central differences have been taken at both the time steps t and t plus delta t and then they have taken an average of this so this is an equally weighted average and that is why there is a multiplication with half that is 0.5 so the first central difference if you look at this particular equation that is taken at t plus delta t that means at the elevated time step and the other central difference has been taken at t time step and then they have taken the average now if you put this particular discretized form in the differential equation assuming alpha is equal to 1 if you remember the equation was delta t delta t is equal to alpha into the second derivative of the t so what we have considered is the alpha is 1 that's why you can see in the discretized form we have not taken any alpha now after we rearrange and put and change the t plus delta t x plus delta x into the indexes like this so x will be termed as index i x minus delta x will be indexed as i minus 1 x plus delta x as i plus 1 t as j and t plus delta t as j plus 1 so if you just pause the video and put on those indexes in this particular equation and then rearrange it so the idea of rearranging is in the left hand side we will write all the equa all the terms which has j plus 1 index and in the right hand side we will be writing all the terms which will have j index and here r is nothing but delta t by delta x square so after we rearrange the j plus 1 and j will be getting an equation in this form so you can see whatever is there in as t j plus 1 that has been taken in the left hand side and it can be written as a matrix over t plus g t t j plus 1 is equal to b t j plus b j plus b j plus 1 now we may be confused about what is this b j b j plus 1 and t j plus 1 and t j so for that what i need to do suppose i put i equal to 1 initially so we'll have an index t 0 and j also 1 so z t 0 comma 2 here in t 0 comma 3 so similarly if you put those indexes you will be getting different temperature at different index points and those index points will be i mean for this grid point say this one this one this one for every grid point will be having 
a set of equations. So every again I'm telling for every grid points if you have equations and then if you just segregate those equations in this form you will be getting this particular expression. Now if I show you the matrix then it will be more clear actually how to generate this particular form of of matrix that I have already discussed in the previous videos in the BTCS method where I have shown how to generate this tried diagonal matrix so if you just if you just look at that video it will be very clear otherwise I'll be putting a link in the description box wherein the details of this particular thing will be written so it will help you for the cross re cross reading but the ultimate thing is whenever you are putting those indexes that is i j if you change i from 0 to so your i means this particular one so you can see your i is changing from 0 1 2 3 so 0 to 10 it will be changing but we are interested to solve the interior point so t1 to t9 is most important Similarly, J is also changing from 0 to a higher value. So as you are moving high and high in J index, you are basically marching in the time directions. So as many points you want to solve for, you need to have that many indexes. So after you have all the indexes like T1 J plus 1, T2 J plus 1. So what I have done is in the left hand side, I have taken only J plus 1 temperature point. So again, I'm telling for this particular problem, we have only T1 to T9 unknowns. We also have T0 and T10, but those are coming from the boundary conditions. But we are trying to calculate the unknown points. And that is why we have taken all the unknowns at J plus 1 time step in the left hand side. And in the right hand side, we have taken the unknown temperature at jth time step and all the constant values, whichever is coming in the equation, we have taken as separate vectors and two vectors are coming like that. So you can see R, this one R T zero J, that means at jth time level, we, we may call it bj and at j plus 1th time level we may call it bj plus 1. So the idea is b and b, bj and bj plus 1 consisting of known values and the known values are coming from the boundary and initial conditions. And so again I am repeating so in the left hand side we have at an elevated time step in the right hand side we have at a time state which is previous time step and the constant vectors. So this particular expression can be written as like this that is a t j plus 1. So we are basically solving for j plus 1 if we already know the temperature values at a previous time step that means the idea is when you know the temperature at a previous time step and we also know the constant values the boundary conditions and initial conditions then we can actually solve for t j plus 1 if we know the matrix a and b so from this particular expression we know the a and b both the matrices are tri diagonal matrix and we know the value of r so we can construct the tri diagonal matrix and we can basically solve for this particular expression so let me go in more detail. So those are the I have taken the elevate I mean different time steps like if this is j equal to 0, this is 1, this is 2, this is 3. So if we know this particular values then we can solve for this particular values and how exactly this is to be done. So the basic expression is like this that is t a t j plus 1 b t j which we have already talked about. Now what we are doing, we are putting this A in the right hand side. So basically in the left hand side, we have the vector of the unknown at J plus 1th time step. Uh, it is giving A inverse dot product uh, into this particular one. 
So if we can calculate A inverse, if we know B matrix, then we can solve for Tj plus 1. Now what I, am I doing? I am replacing J by 0. So it is becoming T1 and this is becoming T0 and B0, B1. So B0 and B1 are those vectors you can see and those vectors can easily be calculated because those values are known from the boundary and initial conditions. So T0 is known B0 from the initial conditions, B0, B1 is also known, B vector, a B matrix and A inverse is known. So basically we have all the known in the right hand side and we can solve for T1. Once T1 is available, we can calculate T2 because in the right hand side, all the things are available. Once you calculate T2, you can go for calculating T3 and this process can keep on going and we can have solution or at all the time steps. So now we'll be going to the yeah now I will be going to the Python code. So we have written the Python code and uh, basically I'll be explaining the lines how exactly the Python code is written and I'll be sharing this particular code so that you can uh, you can use for your purpose. So <laughs> initially the uh, the basic libraries are taken. So as you know whenever we are dealing with numerical calculations the NumPy library is very important. So whenever we are solving numerical uh, problems we will be taking this import NumPy as NP. Uh, math is important because we have been taking some of the operations like inverse of matrix, dot product of matrix and those operations are defined in math library of Python. That's why we are importing this particular library and those libraries are for plotting and visualization purpose. So in all the Python course we have been using this particular library. So I am not going into the details. Now let me just explain you what are the parameters we need for writing this code. So if I just comment it. So n is number of divisions in special direction. So as I have shown in my PowerPoint presentation that we are having 10 divisions and 11 points. If you remember 0 to 10, so 11 different points, grid points and that is why we have 10 divisions. Similarly, in the time directions that is the number of divisions in time direction. And H is the each sub each division in space. Sometimes we call it delta X. Similarly, K would be one by N T. So it would be each division in time. So I hope this. I mean. This commenting will help to understand and this is R that is the co if coefficient which is equal to K by H square and the time steps 15 means in this particular problem they will solve for 15 time steps. In this code, code will be solved for 15 time steps only. You can increase this but here for example it code will be solve for 15 time steps. Now they are creating a linear array of time that is np dot arrange. So we have already talked about it how exactly we can create a, a, that is a lin space or arrays in Python. So I'll show you how exactly they have created but this is linear array creation for that for time. Similarly, linear array for space, linear array for space. Now once they have done all those things, they have plotted those particular linear arrays. So you can see 
if we plot it it looks like this i have already talked about so let me just show you so here you can see 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 so we already talked that there will be 11 grid points but how many divisions one division so from here to here one division two divisions three four five six seven eight nine ten so we have ten divisions and that is why we are writing n equal to ten so number of divisions but for representing it we need to have 11 grid points and those 11 grid points is coming because your n is starting from 0 and that is why there are 11 grid points so in the vertical line we should have 16 points because uh, no they are solving for 15 grid points so there might be 15 in the vertical direction let us count 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 okay so we are taking 15 divisions and that is why we have 15 16 points or the way it is being done so the bottom one is already known from the initial values and next 15 time steps we are basically solving so up to this point we have created the grid points Again, I am telling the red points are now unknowns and we have to calculate for all those red points. Now, in this particular uh, case, what we are doing, we are defining the initial condition. Suppose this W means T, basically uh, in this particular code, we have represented T by W, but you can also represent it by T. So W equal to NP dot zero. So basically at initially all the matrix is initialized with zero. Similarly, all the B matrix because B is coming from if you remember B1 and B2 or BJ and BJ plus one were there. So in this B vector, we are basically putting those values. Now, <coughs> One thing is important, see in NP dot zeros, we are basically taking N plus 1 numbers. Why? Because I have already discussed that if we are solving for 10 divisions, we need 11 grid points. And that is why in, in this particular case, N plus 1 has been taken. And in B NP dot zeros, N minus 1 elements have been taken. So I'll talk about it. So, the initial condition is 4x minus 4x square which is written here. You can see I have written the initial condition and also the boundary condition. So, you can see the boundary conditions are 0. So, we have initially put all the zeros in the matrix. Then we have talked about the boundary conditions in the in the boundary condi in the initial condition so in the initial condition you can see the second index is zero that means the first time step then the first time step is your initial time step and in the boundary condition you can see this is the first index that means the left hand side and this is the last index that is in the right hand side so again 0 to n basically having n plus 1 number so one thing you have to understand why it is taken n plus 1 but here i have taken n because the index is starting from 0 so when you count 0 to n you have n plus 1 numbers and that is why when you are defining the dimension of the matrix you are defining it as n plus 1 but when you are defining the index, you are going up to n from 0. So those things should be clear in mind. Otherwise, you will not be understanding the particular code. So in this step, we have defined initial conditions and boundary conditions. And again, by this particular code, we are basically plotting the initial and boundary condition. And you can see the initial and boundary condition looks like this. So the green points are the boundary condition as well as they are basically 
coinciding both initial and boundary conditions and uh, the blue points indicating the initial conditions so how many blue points 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 so basically those 9 are the unknown points and we will be having a matrix of 9 into number of time steps if you are solving for 15 time steps so the matrix size will be 9 into 15 so up to this point we have defined the boundary conditions now that's time now we have to define the tri-diagonal matrix so how to define the tri-diagonal matrix so we have two matrices a and b initially we initialize the matrix with zeros and the dimension of the matrix is n minus 1 n minus 1 now why the dimension is n minus 1 this is important because Again, I'm telling, so we had 11 grid points. Out of the 11 grid points, where the boundary conditions are already known. So 0 and the last index is already known. So out of 11, if 2 is known, so we'll be having how many? 11 minus 2, that means 9. Similarly, if we generalize it, then what will happen? We we had n plus 1 index here if you see the initial matrix so in this matrix we have n plus 1 index but herein we have n minus 1 because we are reducing two boundary conditions we are only having the unknown points here so thereby a and b dimensions are defined now once the dimensions are defined then we are uh, basically putting the first I mean the main diagonal that is II so II is the main diagonal first diagonal and in II we are putting 2 plus 2R for A and 2 minus 2R for B if you see this matrix you will understand so in A we have 2 plus 2R in the main diagonal and B we have 2 minus 2R so that one is defined here and for the other diagonals that is I plus 1 comma I in A we have minus R similarly I comma I plus 1 we have minus Y so those are the other two other two diagonals and similarly this B I plus 1 I and B I I plus 1 represents other two diagonals for B and other two diagonals for B is R just you match with this particular matrix so in B we have R and in A we have minus R so they have written in A minus R and in B R so everything is defined now now they are calculating inverse so in this step they are basically calculating inverse so I will be putting all the comments before uploading the video. So, calculation of A inverse. So, this is the step. So, here we can write defining the other two diagonals. And here defining the main diagonal defining the main diagonal so i'll be putting uh, those uh, comments so that you can understand it better okay so once the inverse is calculated then they are basically plotting it and ultimately yeah so in this step they are basically showing the matrix a and b which they have formulated so here you can see we have basically formulated the a and b matrix so in a matrix we have <coughs> 2 plus 2 r so 2 plus 2 r is coming 4 because r is taken as 1 but here 2 minus 2 r which is 0 so at the diagonal we have 0 and in this case we have minus r so minus r is minus 1 so here it is minus 1 and in this case this is r and r is plus 1 the yellow 
so it is r so basically we have represented the tridiagonal matrix a and b in a pictorial manner now the ultimate calculation step will come so here you can see in this step uh, they are basically defining the b vectors so b vectors are important because uh, we need to uh, we need to define those vectors in order to calculate the value because you see in the expression we have this bj and bj plus 1 and if you remember bj contains t0 and bj plus 1 can, uh, uh, sorry in bj they have t0 and t10 similarly in bj plus 1 they also have t0 and t10 and all those things are coming from the boundary conditions and these particular steps are defined here now ultimate step is they are doing the dot product you can if you remember the slide so we need to calculate this dot product between a inverse and this and that particular step is being done here in these two steps and once all the things are done and then you can plot and that will give you the temp you get, this is at different time steps and the temperature distribution is given in this particular contour plot so i hope this particular code discussion was helpful i'll be sharing this particular code and i hope this will help thank you